I recently stumbled upon these channels that are absolutely blowing up with just a handful of videos. And get this, the first one has only uploaded 14 videos, but they've already racked up over 850,000 subscribers. Then there's this second one that literally started just five months ago, and it's already sitting at over 150,000 subscribers from only 23 videos. But wait, it gets even wilder. A third channel which is barely four months old is already closing in on 100,000 subscribers from just seven videos. And it's not just these three. There are these other channels that have jumped into the niche recently, and they're absolutely crushing it. All these channels are doing is creating videos that offer motivational and practical advice on hitting personal and professional goals with minimal effort. They're basically debunking this myth that certain skills or goals are impossible to master without a ton of struggle. And before you start thinking that you need some sort of drawing skills to create this style of video, let me stop you right there. These videos are easy to make, and you don't even need to draw anything. All these channels are doing is using simple, line-drawn characters and captions to get their point across. No fancy editing or even animating the characters. It's literally that simple. The best part is that you can create these videos using almost completely free AI tools. Don't believe me? Check out this video I made using this same process. Let's be real. You've probably fantasized about how amazing it would be to learn anything instantly. Just snap your fingers and boom, you've mastered it. Maybe you wanted to nail a backflip to impress your classmates and catch the attention of your sixth grade crush. Or perhaps you dreamed of playing guitar, piano, or mastering random skills like running faster, jumping higher, or even perfecting that viral dance move from 2016. Basically, anything that would make you the cool kid everyone couldn't help but notice. So if you're looking for a niche that is trending and monetizable, then this is the niche for you. And to make things even simpler, I'm going to walk you through the entire process of creating these videos using AI. I'm going to cover everything from setting up the channel to editing the video and even creating the thumbnails for this style of content. All I ask is that if you find this video helpful, hit these awesome buttons, maybe drop a comment too. It doesn't cost you much, but it helps the algorithm recommend the video to more people. The first thing we're going to do is to create our channel. If you've done this before, feel free to skip ahead to the section on branding the channel. Otherwise, head over to YouTube and click your profile picture. Now move down to switch account and select view all channels. Next, you need to click on create new channel and pick your preferred username. If you've already got one in mind, go with that one. But I'm going to show you an AI tool that can help you get this done easily. The name of the tool is Alpha Twin. As you can see, the interface is quite straightforward. To get started, simply paste this command, prompting the tool to generate some channel names for us. We want the names to be short, catchy, and hint at the general purpose of the channel. Additionally, the name shouldn't contain words like these. Now hit enter, and Alpha Twin will generate some pretty cool names that you can use for your channel. Choose one of these or regenerate for newer suggestions. Once you've got the channel name locked in, it's time to craft a description. You can write this yourself, but if you need a little help, Alpha Twin can step in here too. Just paste this prompt and change the text to the name of your new channel. Remember, no one is reading an essay on your channel page, so keep it as short as you need it to be. To make things easier, I'll be leaving this in addition to every other prompt used in this video inside a Google Doc in the prompt channel of my Discord server. You can find the link in the description of this video and on my channel page. Now that your channel is set up, the next step is to add tags to improve your channel's SEO. That stands for Search Engine Optimization. This is what helps your channel show up when people search for certain keywords. Go ahead and add tags like personal growth, self-development, productivity, motivation, and any other phrases that fit your niche or the theme of your new channel. Just a quick tip. Avoid using keywords that have nothing to do with your channel. Not only is that unhelpful, but it could also hurt your SEO. While you're at it, make sure to specify the category your niche falls under. This style of video falls under education, so choose that. Next, you need to brand your channel with a logo and banner. Most of these channels are simply using these line characters as their logo. But don't worry, I'll be showing you how you can create one yourself using AI. Head over to the Google Doc and scroll to this section on channel branding. Now copy this logo prompt and head over to Leonardo AI. Hit image creation and select this flux model. Next, choose 9 by 16 aspect ratio before you paste your copied prompt. Feel free to make any necessary changes to the character's pose or action. I prefer something simple, so this thinking pose is alright with me. Once everything looks good to go, simply hit generate and your new logo will be available within a few seconds. The images look really good, so feel free to choose your preferred one or regenerate. The last step before you start working on the videos is to create a banner for your channel. 
No need for something complex, as you can see from these samples. Something simple like the name of the channel on a black background should do. So just head over to Photopea and create a new project with this width and height. Now select the black color from here and use the rectangle tool to draw this background. Then use the text tool to write the name of your channel at the center. All that's left is to export the banner as a JPEG file, and your channel branding is complete. Now it's time to create the content. The first thing you need to do is to choose the topic for your video. I'm going to show you how you can generate these topics using ChatGPT. But before that though, let's take a quick look at these video titles. If you look closely, you'll notice that half of the video titles start with X is simple actually, or X is easy actually. That's not all. Another popular style is how to. So to make things easier, I've created two separate prompts that you can use to generate both styles. Feel free to choose one depending on the style you want to focus on for your channel. Then head over to ChatGPT and paste it into the text field. Hit enter and ChatGPT will generate a bunch of topics for you. Choose whichever topics you find interesting or simply regenerate. But once you've decided on your topic, the next step is to write the script. I know this part can be intimidating, but I'm going to make it easy for you. All you need to do is to head back to the Google Doc and then scroll to this section on script generation. As you can see, I've created three prompts that you can use. This is because ChatGPT has a limit on the word count per generation, making it quite challenging to create longer scripts. So you need to use all three of these prompts to get your full script. Let me show you how. Copy the first prompt and head back to ChatGPT. Now paste it here and replace this part with your chosen topic. For this demonstration, I'll be using this topic on how you can learn anything faster than everyone. Feel free to make changes to this word count as well. But once everything looks good, hit enter and ChatGPT will generate the first part of the script. You will need to repeat this process using the remaining two prompts. So grab the second one and paste it inside ChatGPT. Replace this with your topic again and proceed with the generation. I'll quickly repeat this for the last part of the script and just like that, your script is ready. Now you can go ahead and generate the voiceover for your narration. Free users can use ClipChamp, but if you want a broader selection of voices, Eleven Labs is a great option. It's a freemium tool, but worth every cent. Head over to their voice library and go through their extensive collection of voice characters. The sheer number of voice characters can be a bit overwhelming, so I recommend using these filters to simplify the process. Once you've selected a voice, go ahead and paste your script inside this text area. To avoid any weirdness in the voiceover, I recommend keeping each generation under 700 characters before you hit generate. It only takes a few seconds and your voiceover is ready. Now the next step is to generate images for the video. For that we'll be using an image generator called Piclumen. Just head over to their website and hit this button. As you can see, their interface is quite similar to other image generators. We're just going to create images of our character for the narration. So paste this prompt inside the text box and select your preferred model. Piclumen has a few models that you can choose from, so feel free to try them out. But this Flux model works perfectly for the style of image we're aiming at. Next, choose your preferred aspect ratio. I recommend choosing different ones depending on the image you're generating. Our first image is a simple one of the character standing alone with his index finger up. So 9 by 16 aspect ratio works perfectly for this particular image. Select the number of images and proceed with the generation. It only takes a few seconds, but the images are ready. These images look pretty good, so we can go ahead and use them for our story. Now, to generate other images, you simply need to paste the same prompt and modify this section with whatever you want. Let's say I want the character to be sitting on a stool while playing a piano. Let's see what the result will look like. These images look good as well, so let's try another one. This time, the character should be lying in bed and holding a phone. Check out these results as well. These images look just as impressive as the previous ones. I'm sure regenerating the image will produce even better results, but let's try a different action. This time, I'll try the character climbing some stairs. Both of these images look good enough, but let's give it one more action, where the character is sitting at a desk while using a computer. Check these results as well. So this is how you can generate every image for your narration. And as you can see, most of these images have dark backgrounds, so we can use them without any changes. But some of your images may not have the same color background, so it's advisable to remove them first before you move on to compiling everything with CapCut. Simply head over to Photo P and drop your image. Now while your image layer is selected, choose the Magic Wand tool and click the background. Hit Delete on your keyboard and repeat this with any other color you want to remove like these ones. It doesn't need to be perfect. Removing the background alone should be good enough. Once everything is done, export the image as a PNG file. You'll need to repeat this process for the rest of your images, but once you're done, the next step would be to increase the resolution of the images before you import them into CapCut. 
The tool I recommend using for this process is Upscale with AY. It's totally free to install and works on both Windows and Mac OS. The only thing you need to do is check this batch up scale, then you select the folder containing your images and choose the model you want to use for the image generation. You can also choose how much you want to upscale your images. For our images, 2 or 3x works perfectly so I'll choose that one. Now you can go ahead and hit upscale. The process doesn't take long and can be even shorter depending on the speed of your computer. But once everything is complete, you can import your images as well as the voiceover into CapCut. The first thing you need to do is to add the voiceover to the timeline. AI voiceovers sometimes have these long pauses, so go through and remove them. Keep playing to make sure the narration sounds natural. Once you're done with the voiceover, it's time to move on to the video. The first thing you need is a dark background, so feel free to create or download one. To make it easier, I'll leave the one I'm using on my Discord server. Simply drop it inside the timeline and stretch to fit the duration of the narration. Next, you need to go through the narration to identify the best places to put the images. Drop in the first image and resize if necessary. No need for any fancy animations, but I think the fade-in animation would be cool at the start of the video. Feel free to play around with the duration till you're satisfied. Now I'll shorten this track and bring in the next image. I'll also drop this bubble image and add the fade-in animation to it. The character should be dreaming about singing, so I'll bring in this image and scale it to fit inside the bubble perfectly. I also downloaded this music image, so I'll add it and scale it down as well. Now to add a bit of motion, head over to Effect and choose either the Play Pendulum or Rebound Effect. I personally prefer the Rebound Effect as the Play Pendulum seems to decrease the quality of images. As you can see, it adds a bit of motion to the music note. This is all based on your personal preference, so feel free to make any necessary changes. You can even add the fade-in animation to the image of the character singing and trim the layers according to the flow of the narration. Keep in mind that you don't need any fancy transitions for this style of video, so you can bring in your next image and trim it before you bring in your next batch of images. To save time, I'll quickly rush through this part. To create the rotation effect, simply set a keyframe, move forward slightly and rotate the character till you reach the point where the rotation should be completed. I'll quickly bring in this curve as well, rotate and reposition it. To add text to the narration, simply drop it inside the timeline and add it here. Now you need to change the font to something simple like Comic Sans, Chantel Sans, or Kristen ITC. Feel free to try out other fonts, but you can grab these ones for free from Google. To add a fade-in effect to the text, create a compound clip, head over to Animation, and select it. I'll quickly speed through the rest of this process. But once that's done, the next step is to add a particle effect. You can get those from any preferred website, but Vectezi has some good effects. Look for either dust particles or film scratches. Something simple will do, so no need for anything complicated. Now drop it into CapCut and change the blending mode to Color Dodge. Decrease the opacity based on your personal preference. I personally don't like the grain being too prominent, so I'll decrease it to something like this. Next, I'll duplicate it and trim the excess part. The next step is to add sound effects, so head over to Pixabay and grab any relevant ones. Add them to your video and decrease the volume. The final step before exporting the video is to add a background music. You can grab one from either YouTube's audio library or Chozik. Once you've found your preferred track, add it to the timeline and decrease the volume significantly. The background music is almost inaudible in most of these videos, so always make sure the volume is heavily reduced and then finally trim any extra parts of the track. Now your video is ready for export at either 2 or 4K resolution. The final step is to create a thumbnail for the video. So head over to PhotoP and create a new 2560x1440 document. The first thing you need is to create a black background. So choose the color and then use this rectangle tool to draw a black rectangle covering the entire canvas. Now, import the images you want to use for the thumbnail inside PhotoP and arrange them based on your personal preference. These thumbnails are typically quite simple, so feel free to play around with it. Once the images have been well positioned, add a catchy text at the top and maybe change part of the text to something like this. Next, I'll bring in an arrow and change the color by going to Blending Options. Select Color Overlay, and then choose a bright color like this one. Now I'll position it here, duplicate and flip it horizontally and move it to the other side. Duplicate it one more time and position it appropriately. Feel free to make any changes to the thumbnail, but once you're alright with it, go ahead and export it as a JPEG or PNG file format. 